What's going on, Grace family? And welcome back to another midweek check-in. So I'm looking back at last Sunday, we had the opportunity where we wrapped up our I Am series and we looked at the last I Am statement of Jesus, where he says, I am the true vine. And a lot of what we learned was covered under the umbrella that what we are rooted in dictates what fruit gets produced in our life. But one of the things that we didn't get to talk about that I really want to focus in on in our couple of minutes here together this week is the idea of pruning. And so I'm just going to read through the first five verses of John 15. And I want to encourage you to pay attention to how the descriptions of fruit change. And then we'll talk about what pruning has to do with that. So it says, I am the true vine and my father is a vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, it is he that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So there's four different movements there. There's no fruit, and then there's fruit, and then there's more fruit and much fruit. So there's kind of this progression of there's none and here's some, but then there's a little bit more and then there's much. And so within that and kind of that progression of fruit as we grow more in Christ likeness, what is the role of pruning in that? And it's right in verse two, right in the middle, it says in every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. And then later on, he talks about those who abide in him bear much fruit. And so I just want to talk about the idea of pruning a little bit. You know, in life and in our world and our uh, American comfort mindset, anything that goes wrong, immediately we have a negative reaction to it. And you know, how can this be? How can I fix it? How can I remove the bad in my life? But I think it's possible and scripture proves it that in this broken world, God didn't create it this way, but he uses the brokenness for good. And he uses the idea of pruning, of taking things out of our life or removing things from our life so that he can produce more fruit and much fruit in and through us. And so I just wanted to encourage you in that. I don't know if you're in maybe a season of change or a season of trial, Maybe there's things that you feel like are being taken away, things you used to be able to do that you can't do anymore. However that plays out, I want to challenge you with the idea of looking at it as an opportunity for God to produce more fruit in your life. Maybe it's a form of pruning that is taking place. And if you continue to use the analogy of a branch or a bush, that pruning is cutting away. It's taking sometimes actual life away. You know, yes, it cuts the dead branches off, but it also could cuts those branches off that are producing fruit, but there's a reason for it so that more fruit and much fruit can be produced. And so I think of that practically being lived out. I think God prunes in our lives or allows some trials, allows things to be taken away because when that happens, it shows us the root that we're connected to. You know, the trials and the storms in life have an opportunity or give us an opportunity to really see our heart and what is it that I'm connected to. And so he prunes some things that may be producing fruit and he prunes them so that we can draw back to the source, that we can get our life from him and he allows more fruit and much fruit to come. And so it's an opportunity to evaluate where we aren't connected to him. But that's also an opportunity for us to rely on him even more and at a deeper level. You know, if you use the simple analogy of, you know, I'm a young dad and the little kids run around, there's a big storm and the thunder just claps. There's moments where the kids just run and they they settle into my lap and they feel safe when my arms are wrapped around them. And that's kind of the idea of pruning. That's an aspect of it that, yes, this trial is happening. Yes, this may be being removed from your life. But the Father wants to just draw us near because He is what is best for us. And when we are near to Him, as it says in that passage, when we abide in Him, that's the final level of fruit. It's more fruit and it's just abundant and great and eternal and good. So wherever you're at this week, if there are things that are not going right, which I'm sure they are, 
Look at them and view them as maybe God is doing some pruning. Maybe he's drawing you in closer to himself. Maybe he wants more reliance, more dependence from you towards himself so that he can produce something that's even better in your life. So just a couple of things to think about. You know, we think about the book of James. It says, consider it pure joy when we're faced with trials of many kind. It's joy because we get to be drawn closer to the Father. So that's my challenge for you to view things differently and to just continue to lay yourself before Him and say, God, how can I allow you to be uh, producing more fruit in my life? How can I allow you to be my pure joy uh, this week? So looking ahead at this Sunday, we've got Wayne Allen who is preaching. We're going to be sharing communion with one another. So a couple of things that we can be looking forward to. So enjoy the rest of your week. Uh, Try to enjoy those moments of pruning and allow God to produce that fruit in and through us. And we'll see what he does with us as a body here at Grace. Have a great week and we'll see you here Sunday at 9 a.m.